हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम इन द फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ दिस सी एच ए फोर नाइंटी वन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव सीन द जेल एंड इनहेलेशन प्रिपरेशन दिस पॉइंट्स वी हैव सीन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर नाउ इन द टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस थ्री पॉइंट्स ऑइंटमेंट ओरल लिक्विड्स एंड ओरल पाउडर्स सो दिस इज द कंटेंट ऑफ द टूडेज लेक्चर इन दिस लेक्चर we are going to discuss the ointments then types of ointment then how the ointments are prepared this part we are going to discuss here then after that the definition of oral liquids and definition of oral powders these points we are going to discuss in the today's lecture this is the reference used for this lecture indian pharmacopoeia volume 27th edition let's move towards the first point that is ointments this is the picture of ointments these ointments are nothing but these are the homogeneous semi solid preparation intended for the external application to the skin means these ointments are homogeneous semi solid material and generally it is applied externally on the skin okay the another definition of this ointment is the a certain mucous membranes for the emollient means what to make a skin soft protective therotic or prophylactic purposes where a degree of occlusion is desired okay this is the another definition of ointment the next point is types of ointment there are two types of ointments medicated ointments and the second one is non medicated ointments then we see the first that is medicated ointments these contain a medicament either dissolve or disperse in the vehicle as a fine powder or in the form of micronized powder okay medicated means medicated part is there and vehicles both are mixed together and they prepare the medicated ointments the example of this medicated ointment is genta mycin ointment okay then the next type is non medicated ointment these are used as a vehicles for the preparation of medicated ointments or can be used for their physical effect the example is a soft paraffin in the previous medicated ointment medicated part and vehicles are there here that vehicle parts it is nothing but the non medicated ointments the example is a soft paraffin then after that uh, here the properties of ideal ointments are there what are the properties of ideal ointments the first one is it should be non sanitizing it should be non irritating and third it is a pharmaceutically irritant means what attractive okay it is pharmaceutically attractive then efficient release of medicament at the site of application okay means it is efficiently release their medicament at the site of application it is water and washable water soluble or it must be washable these are the ideal properties of ointment then the next one is ointment bases there are four types of ointment bases are there hydrocarbon bases adsorption bases water removable bases water soluble bases the base should not be produced irritation or sanitization of the skin it should be smooth inert odorless or almost odorless physically and chemically stable compatible with the skin and with incorporated medicament means the ointments are prepared along with this bases there are four types of bases and this bases should have a ideal property and that properties are given here it should be like this okay the another also properties 
of the bases are the preparation of this base ingredient should be such that the ointment is not too soft means the proper proportion of this bases are used if we are not use this proper proportion then ointment is too soft or too hard and it is convenient not convenient to used okay for that the ingredient this base ingredient should be in proper proportion consistency should be such that the ointment spread and soften when stress is applied okay so this is about the ointment bases then how these ointments are prepared that is explain here ointments are prepared by two general method the first one is incorporation method and the second one is the fusion method incorporation means what two ingredients are mixed properly and make a uniform mixture that is nothing but the incorporation so let us see this incorporation method by the incorporation method the components are mixed until a uniform preparation is attended okay here some pictures are given in corporation of a solid here this white material it is the ointment and this pink colored part it is the drug here the drug it is in the pink powder okay is usually smaller quantity of the two ingredients this pink powder it is in a smaller quantity as compared to this one okay then add an amount of ointment that is approximately equal to the size of drug means whatever size is there that uh, part of ointment is added first mix with the spatula spatulate the mixture means mix with the help of the spatula continue adding until all of the ointment is huge spatulated after such a addition we are getting this ointment means all ointment we are going to mix in this drug but uh we are going to mix slowly when we get this ointment okay so this is the incorporation method then the next is the fusion method in the fusion fusion means what we are going to mix two or more ingredients by applying heat means by melting that ingredients we are preparing a uniform mixture and after cooling that mixture we are we are getting the proper ointment this is nothing but the fusion method so let us see this fusion method fusion is the act or a procedure of liquefying or melting by the application of heat by the fusion method all or some of the components of an ointment are combined by melted together and cooled with the constant stirring until we get a thickened ointment the meaning of this word it is we are getting a thick ointment okay heat labile substances added at last when the temperature of the mixture is low enough not to cause the decomposition of the ingredients means the heat is provided in this method uh, so it must be controlled because the decomposition of ingredients also takes place okay this fusion method if we perform in a small scale then it is performed in a porcelain dish or the glass beaker and if we perform this on the large scale it is carried out in a large steam jacket kettles okay so this is nothing but the fusion method packaging storage and labeling in a large mouth ointment jar or in a metal or the plastic tube we are going to place the ointment in well closed container to protect against the contamination and in a cool place to protect against the product suppression due to the heat when required light sensitive preparations are packed or light resistant containers we are used in addition to the usual labeling requirement for the pharmaceutical product the usp directs that the labeling for certain ointments and cream include the type of base used means on the labeling we must mention which types of base are used a proper labeling is done 
water soluble or water insoluble base whatever we use it should be mentioned on the label then with this we complete the ointment part then we see the next point that is oral liquids oral liquids means uh, generally uh, the liquids which are orally taken that is nothing but the oral liquids oral liquids are homogeneous liquid preparation usually consisting of a solution and emulsion or a suspension of one or more medicament in a suitable vehicles they are intended for the oral administration either undiluted or after dilution they may contain auxiliary substances such as suitable dispersing emulsifying sus suspending wetting stabilizing thickening stabilizing agent and antimicrobial preservatives they may also contain a suitable sweetening flavoring and permitted coloring agent if the saccharin including its sodium or potassium salt it is used as a sweetening agent its concentration in the preparation meant for the pediatric use should be restricted so as to limit its intake to 5 mg per kg of the body weight okay during the manufacturing packaging storage and distribution of the oral liquid a suitable mean should be taken to ensure their microbial qualities okay means during the packaging microbial qualities must be ensured oral liquid should not be diluted and stored the diluted oral liquid should be freshly prepared irrespective of the nature of the dilute diluted oral liquids may be less suitable physically or chemically than the corresponding undiluted preparation and should be used within the period stated on the label these oral liquids are having these types these are the types mixture oral drops oral emulsion oral solution oral suspension and serums so you are going to read these points then the next one is oral powders oral powders are finely divided powders that contain one or more medicament with or without auxiliary substances okay in that the auxiliary substances are there in the oral liquid while in the oral powders with or without auxiliary substances including their specified flavoring or coloring agent addition of saccharin or its salt is not permitted in the preparation meant for the pediatric use they are intended to be taken internally with or without aid of water or may or any other suitable liquids oral powders may be single dose or multiple dose preparation for single dose preparation each dose is enclosed in a separate container or a sachet or the paper packet or the bottle with a multiple dose powder it may be necessary to provide a measuring device capable of delivering the quantity prescribed okay effervescent oral powders are intended to be dissolved or dispersed in the water before administration in the manufacturing of this oral powder means are taken to ensure a suitable practical particle size with regard to the intended use of the product okay during the manufacturing and packaging storage and distribution of this oral powder suitable means should be taken to ensure their microbial qualities storage store oral powder in container protect from the moisture okay so with this we finish these three points ointments oral liquids and oral powders now in the next lecture we are going to uh, we will discuss the remaining point of this chapter okay thank you